Well, now that you've got a good understanding of how to bring in audio into your projects, we're going to get away from loops, get away from audio, and now move on to uh, what the bulk of this class will end up being, which is MIDI recording. And MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And it's a way basically for computers and keyboards and other controllers to be able to communicate and talk to one another. So we're gonna be using our own keyboard. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard of your own, uh, which I'm assuming that most of you do not, um, you're gonna be able to use your computer keyboard, your QWERTY keyboard as it's called, um, to be a MIDI controller to control the sounds that BandLab is making. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new project. We're gonna start with something super basic. Um, Mary Had a Little Lamb, which is a song that hopefully all of you know, at least to some basic level. And you're going to go to a new project and click on instruments. And so you can now see that we have a piano here at the bottom. And now we have an instrument track up here. And this instrument track is going to be able to, um, it's going to sound uh, however we want it to sound. So we can make it sound like a piano, we can make it sound like a guitar, we can make it sound like a drum set, uh, we can make it sound like uh, any instrument the band lab has, we can make it sound like that. So I'm going to give you some, some I'm going to give you some basics here about how this is going to work. So the first thing um, I want you to do is to select which instrument you want this to be. So down here under the instrument window, there's lots of different options here. So if I click on piano here, it opens up a drop down menu with lots of different things on here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to winds. And I'm going to just a defaults to flute, but I'm going to move it to oboe because I kind of like the sound of an oboe. And you'll notice that on my keyboard here, on my piano keyboard at the bottom of the screen, each one of these keys is marked uh, with a certain letter or a number. And these all correspond to um, QWERTY keys. All right, so you can see that this is C right here. If you don't know your piano um, names yet, in, term, in terms of what notes are which on the piano, you need to go back and review that because that is an essential piece of learning that will help you with every single assignment moving forward. And if you're not really automatic with that, spend a little bit of time before even advancing right now and just review those notes. So we're all speaking the same language because this is crucial for you to understand. All right, so when I play the comma, you can see that I'm playing C right there. When I play the Z, I'm also playing C. It's just a different, it's a lower sounding C. So here's low C, if I move up the scale, C, D, E, F, C. And all I'm doing here is moving Z, X, C, V, B, M, M, comma, on my keyboard. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the melody of Mary Had, Mary Had a Little Lamb using these notes. And we, this, this song happens to start on the note E. Yeah, I'm going to play this one. So. And so up to B, which is actually the, the note G on the piano, but we play it using a B. All right, so let's go ahead and record that now. Now, if you look at the um, PDF that I've enclosed uh, on this assignment, you will see that I've given you a BPM of 80, 80 beats per minute. So my first step is gonna be changing my tempo right here, to 80 beats per minute. That'll set my metronome up right. Okay, so again, two, three, four. Oh. Now the recording isn't playing the metronome. So I'm gonna click on that, make sure that happens. Two, three, four. All right, so notice I followed that metronome uh, exactly as best as I could. Um, and then if I double click on my region here, I can see all the notes as they were played. 
and hopefully they line up perfectly. If they don't line up perfectly, one thing you can try is quantizing these notes. So if I select all these notes, you can see there's a button right here that says quantize. And if I choose quarter note, click on quantize, you can see there's some minor little shifts that happened to make sure everything really got lined up perfectly. Quantize. Last group. All right now, everything should be quantized. So I want to go back and play it. In time with that metronome, which is exactly what we want. If you record it out of the metronome, it's going to throw off your whole project. So you got to work really, really well at recording the uh, recording your your melody line. Uh, when you're starting out here, record it right in time with the metronome and make sure you are not um, going too fast or too slow. And this takes some practice if you're not used to playing a musical instrument. Um, so just do your best in terms of um, making that happen. So what we just recorded was the melody. All right. And it's important that you understand the difference between the melody and the supporting accompaniment or the harmony parts. So there's always going to be in any given song, there's going to be a melody. That's going to be the tune. That's going to be the thing that you remember. Mary had a little lamb is the melody. All right. And all the other things that happen in the song um, that we're going to be creating multiple tracks here. There's going to be a, a bass part. There's going to be drums. There's going to be usually a piano part or a guitar part. And these are all going to be playing accompaniment sounds. Okay, and these are all going to be based on what we call chords. And a chord is usually a group of three or four notes that are played simultaneously. Now, sometimes they can be broken up, but usually they're played simultaneously. So I'm going to show you what I mean because it's a lot easier to show you rather than just talk about it. So I'm going to add a new track now. I'm going to add a piano part. So if I click on add new track and in instruments, I think it defaults to piano here. Okay. Now this is kind of low, you see? So I'm going to move this up a couple octaves. Okay, so I'm going to start with my C chord. And the C chord is comprised of three different notes, C, E, and G. Or on my piano, or on my QWERTY keyboard, I'm playing Z, C, and B. So those three notes uh, make up the C chord. And that's going to be a lot of what we play in this song, actually. There's going to be one other chord that you'll see in your sheet music, and that's the G chord. All right, and that's going to be played on B, M, and the period, okay? Or the notes G, B, and D. The notes G, B, and D comprise the G chord. So if you look at the, um, the chart here, and what I mean by the chart is the, the sheet music. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share this with you because that'll make it a lot easier. All right. So you've got the melody line right here, this E, D, C, D, E, 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 that I was just playing for the melody line. Okay, up here, right above the notes, you see some other letter names. And these are going to be the chords, all right, that we're playing. Now, you notice in this song, we have C, G, C, C, G and C. We keep on playing C until we reach the G chord, and then we keep on playing G until we reach the C chord, and then we keep on playing C until we play, reach the G chord, and then we go to C. So it's all kind of moving together. Um, so again, we wanted to keep it nice and easy, nice and easy for you as we started. So now I'm going to stop sharing this and get back into Band Lab. So now. One second. All right. So now, I'm gonna, here's my C chord again, Z, C, and B, and my G chord, E, M, and P. All right. So I'm going to move my uh, chords in accordance with what the sheet music tells me to do. Three, four.
All right, now that might be a little tricky for some of you to do. You can always record it at a slower tempo and speed it up later. That's a nice thing about MIDI recording is you could record at 60 beats per minute if that's kind of tough for you. Or the other thing you can do is double click on the region here and just draw in your notes using the pencil tool right here. All right, you just wanna make sure that you're drawing them in at the right time. So again, what I'm gonna do here is quantize these. these and this will help again be perfect but sometimes you don't really want it to be absolutely perfect because then it sounds like a computer but as we're starting out here it's not a bad idea okay so now let's hear what this sounds like So you'll notice in the sheet music that you play C for two measures, G for one measure, C for three measures, G for one measure, and then C for one more measure. All right. So now we're gonna get, now that we've got our piano part in there, we're gonna add in the bass, all right? So I'm gonna add a track, choose my instrument, and this time I'm gonna go to bass, not brass, all right? And there's lots of different options here. Um, the 62 bass, um, the P bass, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. Bring it up an octave. Um, let me keep it down there. All right. So um, the nice thing about the bass is that you only play one note at a time. Now, if you're an amazing bassist and you know how to, you know, you've been playing for 10 years and you know how to do some fancy things on the bass, then sometimes they end up playing more than one note at the same time. But nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, a bassist is gonna play one note at a time. And it's usually gonna be the root note of the chord that, it, that the piano part's playing. So those notes C or the chords C and G, well, we're gonna, the bassist is usually gonna play the notes C and G, depending on if the chord is a C or a G. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and now I'm gonna record the bass part. Again, just using the notes C and G. I'm gonna play two bars of C, one bar of G, three bars of C, one bar of G, one bar of C, just like the sheet music tells me to do. Two, three, four. All right, and you can see that everything's pretty much lined up the same way the piano part is. So that's kind of a good indication that things are going well. If I wanted, I could go in here and quantize this further to make it perfectly lined up. Again, I only need to do quarter notes because you're, you're basically snapping the note to the nearest quarter note. So if you're way off, it's not gonna help you. But if you're close by like I am, not to brag, <laughs> um, but uh, it'll, it should be pretty accurate. Oh, last key notes, quantize. Okay, so now here in the notes again. All right, for my fourth instrument, I'm gonna bring in something that is a sustained instrument. Because right now I've been having, everything's kind of moving at a nice steady pulse. Da, 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 da. But there's nothing that's really kind of da, really sustaining. And that's one thing you always kind of want to look out for. You don't want all of your instruments to be moving the exact same pace because that gets really boring after a while. Obviously, you know, this song isn't the most uh, exciting song in the world, but um, I think having an instrument that, um, that sustains will be helpful. So I'm going to bring in some strings. All right, so I'm going to click on my instrument here, change it to strings, string orchestra. That sounds good. Okay. Pick it up to the I'm gonna, it sounds really loud right now, but I'm gonna 
bring that down in the mix once we have it recorded. All right, so now I'm just gonna play these notes and let it sustain. Instead of playing every single beat, I'm gonna let it sustain for a whole note or two whole notes, um, eight full counts, sometimes even 12, um, just to move along with the chords. So here we go. All right, well, I got my strings up there now. And you might notice that I had to kind of let go of the strings a little bit early in order for me to move my hand to get to the next chord. So what I can do, And just extending the end of all three notes. So it kind of makes a more seamless transition. We call this legato, making it really connected from note to note. Now this is gonna be way too loud. So I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna bring the volume way down here. If this is all you hear, that's a problem. We want our melody to be heard the strongest out of everything. So I'm gonna bring down again my strings, make sure that melody is preserved. We wanna be able to hear that most of all. And I kinda of like that. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is enter a track of someone singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. It could be you, it could be a sibling, it could be one of the you know, people that lives with you, uh, it could be a, a close and personal friend, um, whoever you want it to be, but it's gotta be somebody. I want someone to sing uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. So I'm gonna bring in a vocal channel here and we are gonna record Mary Had a Little Lamb. All right, not sure if you can hear that, but right now, when what happened was that um, my recording was was kind of muffled by the fact that it was playing my computer audio along with it. And this is a very important thing for you to, to keep in mind. When you are doing any kind of vocal recording, you want to um, use headphones uh, to hear the accompaniment track so it doesn't pick up any of that stuff, including the metronome in your project. So I don't have my headphones with me, so I'm gonna trust that you guys will do that on your own. So that's the last thing to do is get your vocal recording done and then kind of balance it all together make sure that you can really hear the the melody okay your vocal as well as that first track that you made it doesn't have to be oboe by the way i just picked oboe at random you could do whatever you know, whatever track you want um and then you'll be able to uh yeah uh, get this all recorded mix it down and then add your teacher as your collaborator and you are good to go so four instrument tracks one vocal track, and um, yeah. If you have any questions about anything that was just said, um, just rewind, and um, you know you can always uh, you know look at these things, practice them in slow motion before you actually do them full speed for the recording. And like I mentioned before, you can always record at a slower pace, a slower BPM. Um, and then speed it up later. You just can't do that with audio recordings. You can't do that with a vocal, but you can do that with any of the other MIDI recording stuff that you're doing. All right.
Good luck. One thing I forgot to mention is to label your tracks and label your project. So you notice up here, I labeled it Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then I changed all my tracks just to keep them organized with what instrument they were actually playing. So you can keep that in mind as you are um, organizing all of your projects.